We're not horseback riders, you know, we're coastal people. Traveling along the waters, those ancient highways out there, recreating a lot of the, the ways of life brought to us from the water and the air, going through the forest and the lands, and in the forest, that's where we get our cedar trees. The bark was used for clothing, the wood was used for houses, and the trees were used for canoes. They had river canoes, they used them for fishing. They had war canoes and they used them for war. And many of our ancestors, they liked to travel around, and meet all the relations all around the Pacific Northwest. They liked to keep their minds and their hearts open to anybody they'd come upon. As they say, the ancestors travel with us on these journeys. They make the same journeys we do to make sure that we're all right. All forward. When you look across and you see through the break of that little bit of fog, you almost feel like your ancestors sent that canoe your way so that you know we're not alone. We speak to that canoe in wonderful ways. We tell her our name and who we are and what we're there for. Ugly feelings on the water in the canoe, it'll weigh it down. You'll see a canoe stop. There's bad feelings on that canoe. The revival of our culture is more than just a way for us to, to get excited about jumping in a canoe and going paddling and singing some songs and dancing. It goes a lot farther than that. I'm really hoping it's not a fad. I'm hoping this reaches deeper into our hearts and our souls to pull back that reawakening of our cultures. You gotta see it with your own eyes to believe what's going on. Almost four years ago, I began attending meetings with tribes from the coast and in the Puget Sound area to uh, learn more about how they were practicing their canoe culture and what it meant to them. I learned from one of the canoe families that there was a, a canoe up in Tofino, British Columbia that was for sale. I had to approach our tribal council to find out where we could find the money for this canoe. My father, he was on, on canoes as, a, as a, a young lad, you know, and they traveled out through the Green River across the bay over into, say, uh, the Bremerton area. They, they'd peel bark and pick medicinal herbs and live off the land, you know, shellfish, things like that. So uh, I was always really fascinated with uh, the idea of the canoe journey. It took about six months before we actually identified available funding within the tribe to buy this canoe. We made a major investment in it. We've been shopping for a good sound support boat to support the canoes. Last year was the first year that Michael Shute participated. My husband called me at the end of the first day and said, we're really short-handed. We have not enough ground crew. And so I packed my gear up and was out on the journey with them for about a week. I wasn't really in, too interested in doing it, but then, you know, my dad kept asking me and asking me. So I was like, he really wants me to go. So. I guess I can go on the journey with them. If you want to have things done for you appropriately, that means you have to come to the meetings. You need that time to understand exactly what we have to do to make this thing happen. Be involved early and stay involved throughout the whole year. I began thinking about becoming part of the Muckleshoot Canoe family last year when my niece Connie Daniels and her daughter Bettina Brown were participating in the canoe journey. I'd just like to say a little bit about the canoe that we have here. This is grandmother. Grandmother is my mom. My oldest sister Yvonne became terminally ill last August and I stayed behind with her and helped a little bit with her home care. 
Everybody in the community knew her as grandmother. That's what they called her. I called her grandmother. And she passed away. And the last event that she attended as a community member was the potlatch at Quinault. And the canoe club um, wanted to name this canoe after her. So this is named after my mom and uh, Bettina up there, her grandmother. Some of our last conversations were about the journey and about her daughter, Connie, and her granddaughter, Bettina pulling with the Muckleshoot family. Last year, I heard my mom talking about she wanted to go on the canoe journey. I thought it sounded kind of cool because I never really even seen a canoe or seen, seen them pull before or nothing. So she's like, well, I want to go. And I'm like, well, if you're going to go, I want to go. I'm going to grow up and be a woman and have to do the same things that they're doing. I'm probably going to be just like my mom, how she takes care of everybody, you know, make sure they got clean clothes on their back and they got food in their stomach. Clam chowder. Last year, my dad, he was going to the practices, and he was telling me, oh, you should come, and you should get involved. And I was telling him, no, I got to go to work, and I wanted to hang out with the girls and just mess around all summer, because it's my summer, you know? So I didn't go last year, but then when he came back, he's telling me all the stuff about it, so I got a little more interested. Mike over here, he gets all excited and he's like, oh man, I forgot I have to go to practice. I was like, practice for what? And he goes, well, I'm a polar. And I was like, oh, what's that? And he says, it's this thing that we do with the tribe and there's a journey during the summer. My friend Andy couldn't make it today. I guess I'll introduce him. Andrew Pena, Mexican. I think that's all he is, Mexican. <laughs> the whole subject of me not even being native just gets forgotten because it doesn't really matter as long as you're doing the right thing. My dad got me into the canoe journey because he wanted me to do something. You know, I wasn't doing much at home. My dad just thought that I was going to enjoy myself. I thought that there was a time when him and I weren't getting along very good and relating to each other. And uh, I thought that I was going to lose him. Last year, I told him he is going on the canoe journey. He volunteered me for it without even asking me. Halfway through, I gave him the chance to come home if he wanted to, and he told me no. I went to all the meetings, all the protocols, and tried to learn as much as I could. I think he had a new appreciation for who he was as a person. Six years ago, I started working for the tribe at Head Start. My mom was adopted, so we didn't know a whole lot of our family background. So around that time is when I first started finding out more about my culture. This year, the tribal journey just kind of fell on my lap. This was like my door into a different part of my culture. Well, originally I had wanted to go last year and um, I had full intentions, but then uh, we are expecting our second child. So I kind of waffled around. It was very hard for me to make to the practices because I was teaching during those hours. Um, but as spring started to approach, my coworker Rachel and Tony Martin, they kind of were prodding me to, to, to get in there and get involved. Being a mother of three, my last one's 10 months old and I'm 31 and I felt out of shape. It was exciting in the sense, yeah, I was pumped up, but then in the other sense, what am I doing? What have I gotten myself into? Pants or anything that your stuff is in there. And I know that all you kids are gonna do a wonderful job. And it's gonna be great and it's exciting. No matter how tired you get, you're gonna wake up the next morning and jump up and say, well, come on, let's go, I'm ready. Being so new into the canoe family and canoe society, we were kind of unsure of where to go and what to do and what was proper and what wasn't proper. And Norma has really, really been our strong elder in teaching us those ways and what's right. Norma has a special place in the Muckleshoot people's hearts, I think, especially this crew. She seems to be the elder that has been brought to them to fill that role. She's always saying how she loves us and she couldn't be without us. And this is her life. She was raised out there in the coast and she's been a part of these things for who knows how long. She was married into the Kuliut village through the Penn family. Her mother's from the Muckleshoot family. I learned my culture from my mother, Lillian Pullen. 
and it's wonderful that we could uphold her and not honor. I've noticed over time that we've had people out on a canoe and we've got people on a canoe who are the skipper giving orders. That's not the way things work. And you don't question them, you don't challenge them. Skippers, he's got 10, 11, 13 people's lives he's responsible for. They said they needed a skipper with someone with experience, someone who sat in that back seat before us. I got experience. You know I'm half muckle suit. They kind of looked at me, you're what? And it's my dad's muckle suit. Oh, really? He was, yeah. And so I'm half muckle suit, half Pialop. Will you skipper for us? Of course. Of course I will. Do whatever I can to help you guys. You guys are all my family here. As young as he is, the knowledge that he has and the wisdom that he has and the love that he has for the canoe just permeates from him. You can just feel it when you're around him. My dad had always told me, you listen to the elders, you listen to what they have to say. They'll give you the teachings that you need to survive. They'll help you. I believe that Big Les and Little Les both play a big part in bringing not just canoe knowledge and wisdom, but spiritual knowledge and wisdom back to Muckleshoot and definitely to the canoe family. And I confronted Walter up there at the administration building. I heard you needed a skipper for a big boat unless I know how to drive one. Big Les is captain of our big support boat and We've kind of nicknamed him Papa Bear because he's just so protective over us. He's like got eyes all the way around his head. We always have someone to go to. They're always there. They'll always help us. It's just like our grandfathers. They'll always be there. So many people call these new people coming in the canoe journey babies because they don't know and understand about taking care of the canoes. They need to be well nurtured, they need to be well watched over, and they need someone there with the experience and traditions and the teachings of the elders that, that can help them. And these babies are being gifted with something that is very important to them. They're telling us that we had to have good conduct because uh, the elders from all the other tribes would be watching and we had to behave. Let's be very conscientious of what we're doing and how we need to conduct ourselves. You know, they said at some of our meetings, we won't tolerate drinking, we won't tolerate drugs, we won't tolerate certain behaviors, or you will pack your bags and you'll be going home. We have curfews, we have bedtime, we have um, no cussing, no drinking, no smoking. You have to respect the people around you. You have to respect the water. You have to respect the canoe. Respect is a showing that you're willing to learn. And a person who's willing to learn can always grow. When I heard that this journey was about healing and unity, I started to question myself as far as why am I taking this journey and what is it going to do for me? Every stroke, they say, can cleanse a person just by one stroke, can wash away the bad things and negative things, unite you as a family. The tribe of Muckleshoot needs to be put out in the world. They can't sit underneath that mountain forever. All eyes were on us. This is the raven, and this is the bear claw, and this is a killer whale. And they gave the budget for all the new gear that we have. You know, we have beautiful new life jackets, gorgeous warm-ups, wet. And this is the mountain with Green River and White River, because Muckleshoot's between the Green River and the White River. George Starr is the one that did the design. We bought smaller tents this year that are easier to set up. Each puller and even some of the ground crew has their own tote, we're calling it. We just came into it so prepared. Everybody here is very fortunate for Muckleshoot to buy what you guys are gifted with. Mm -hmm. You have to have the appreciation to these Muckleshoot people that is gifting you with all these things you would never ever be able to get yourself. I'm glad you called, Donnie. Okay, I'll do that. All right, thank you. Oi. Oh man, that's quite a. I'm glad at least he was considerate enough to call me. I guess uh, one of the problems we're experiencing right now is 
although we have a schedule for canoes coming in from different areas, it's not going as planned. You know, and that's just typical journey things that go on is just because, you know, stuff happens. And uh, when it happens, we just have to try to accommodate all the little changes that have to take place. But it's going to work out just fine. When we arrived in Nia Bay, our support team, they weren't there when we got there. We're just kind of twiddling our thumbs, waiting so we can start setting up our tents and getting out the sleeping bags and getting everybody's gear to them. Can't miss it when it's coming though. We should be able to see it from way over there because it's so bright yellow. <laughs> I know. We're right directly across from the senior center. If you're looking for us, that's where we're at. I'll be there shortly. Oh, I see you guys. I see a bright yellow truck. I see Hi. you. I see you. Oh boy, it feels good to be here. They really rely on the ground crew. You come in off that water and you want your dry clothes and a warm bed and hot food. If it wasn't for the ground crew, you'd be trying to complete that all on your own. This is you need a garbage can. Yep, muck fries are better than McDonald's. The first day we got to Nia Bay, things were great. Everybody was excited. We are the muckle shoe. Yeah, we are the muckle shoe. We are over here at the hall at 7 o'clock. My name is Walter Pacheco. I'm with the Muckleshoot Canoe family. We're glad to be here. Eric, my son, Eric Pacheco, he's going to be uh, skippering uh, this year. Uh, Norma Rodriguez, an elder and uh, uh, mentor in our canoe club. Red power. Muckleshoot power. <laughs> Our support boat broke down again. They're on their way now, but they're delayed. The big one? Yeah, the big one, the brand new boat. God, this is new. And then we found out that the smaller boat, that the seas got pretty rough for them and that they ended up having to beach her. Things happen yeah. for a reason. Yeah. And we ran into some conflicts, and I think it threw us all off. We're not vacationing. I think I've kind of gotten the opinion that there, some people are like, well, we're vacationing, we don't want to have to work. Well, I'm concerned about, though, is the paddle situation. We don't have enough paddles for practice tomorrow, do we? The closer it gets to departure, the more disciplined you guys need to be. I want us to set a curfew right now. Some other people need to step up. OK, let's go get it. I began to see the dynamics of our group. The needy, those that were just there because it was better than being at home watching TV and not having something to do. I'm gonna to try to round everybody else up so we can get a circle together. So everybody Their focus, I think, was off of why, why we were out there. For our purpose to be on that water. The big support boat finally caught up to us by Saturday. They're finally here, and that's all that counts is that they're here, you know. Pretty big waves, huh? Yeah, came right over the top of that boat. <laughs> really? All yeah, the right places. Whereabouts were you? We were just coming off uh, Dungeness. Really? Spit, yeah, and that's where these guys beached it. Dang. There was three crew members on that small craft that ended up spending the night in a ranger station. We put it right on the beach, and said, hurry up and jump off and tie it onto a log so that the boat don't go nowhere. So I called the Coast Guard back to them. They're OK. They're beached on Dungeness Point. One of the guys was complaining about being hungry and stuff. 
And he was getting kind of frustrated with me because I was in a hurry trying to get back out to the spit to see how those guys are okay. And, and he was getting kind of angry with me for not feeding him. So I kind of lost faith with that guy and kind of upset me. He wanted this to hitchhike to Nia Bay, and I told him, just go ahead and go, so I don't need this. Did they have gear to camp and stuff to support the little boat? No, but they called from a cell phone, and Mike always carries matches. What My your son was with him? Yeah, Michael, Les Jr., and Ray. My dad, he cut out, and I think that was one of the lowest points. I'd, he did that to me, and Les, he's looking for us, and my dad just left. And somebody picked you up and gave you a ride? Man, I had my paddle fun. sticking up here, my backpack <laughs> here, my dry bag there, my drum in this and hand, and a sign in this hand. Bus. Everything about me said polar. I'm Impatience the got the best of him. He was too anxious to get up there to Nibay to the canoes. May our own will be removed from us so that we can do what's needed each day so that we're guided in a good way and kept strong heart and spirit. There were some things brought to the circle that were really hard, decisions that had to be made, and it started to divide the family. That's when the confrontation started for my dad to be sent home. Norma made a comment earlier, and that is, well, things might be happening this way because there's something going wrong in the family. What's going to happen is we're getting some people from the west side of Vancouver pulling up. They're going to pull in and they're going to go through protocol with the Macaws because they need to ask permission to land here. Macaws are going to give them permission to land and they're going to land and set up their camp and prepare for meetings and circles. Send you their best. We're glad to have you. We are honored to host you, and we welcome each and every one of you here. Glad to have you. You've got a reputation for making fast and Fast and Furious. Steady, yeah, Fast and Furious canoes. Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, getting tired of being in the lead all the time. Let me scratch my head way out here for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make some competition. Right. <laughs> so. Good, I'm glad you like it. The Muckle Shoots are gonna bring their new canoe down and get it blessed and name it. You don't look for a name, the name will come to you. A lot of the a lot of the names that are on these canoes, it came to them. Let's go back to that naming thing. Yeah, I was gonna ask. We had we had thought. about three different three or three different choices here. They had all these different names floating around, floating around, and an eagle came down. And it blessed the canoe. 
Look, guys, Tony said, look, look, the eagle came down. So we should name this canoe Eagle Spirit. They gave us a name right there. Flew over us twice, out there in the water. It's about the best sign I've seen all day for a name. They put it in the water and they started paddling around. And one came right down in front of them. That's how they knew they got their name, it was Eagle Spirit. We were so joyous when we took delivery of Eagle Spirit. We got to take her out on the bay for a quick spin. One of our skippers arrived, he got to take her out, and we actually had a, a, a prayer out there for her and talked about her name and why it was so important to call her Eagle Spirit. A lot of prayers have been said for that canoe that is, that is carved by Theron Parker. I kept praying and asking the Creator to take these things from my mind, these concerns that I had so that I could pull with a good heart. Someone said, as you pull with each stroke, let those feelings go. I want to hold my hands up to our pullers we have out there. I cry for them. I hurt for them. I see them hurting. I'm hurting. We may have to take some time and, and, and say, hey, maybe we shouldn't go out tomorrow. You're not supposed to go into it with bad feelings. You're supposed to feel positive about it. And if someone has those feelings, then we don't need to be in that canoe. It was pretty foggy and it was 5 a.m. We were on our way to Clallam Bay. And I think everybody's emotions and everybody's adrenaline was pumped and everybody was ready to go. When they said there was breakfast down there at the gym, I said, oh, I'm getting up, I'm going to eat. <laughs> everybody come back. Because there. there's nothing there. Oh, the other tribes really? got it before us. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to try. <laughs> I think for some, you know, it's a big competition to see who lands first, and I don't think that's going to be the case with us. Hey, Walter, should us go down to the support boat? Do you stay overnight there? Mm hmm. Come on, Rachel, where are you? Harrison. Come on. Get up. Sleeping beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that big eagle come flying up the fog? Uh, yeah. Early this morning? Yeah, I know you seen it. Yeah, it was big too. Yeah. He's like, I can fly through the fog, you can paddle through the fog. Let's go. Some of us didn't come into this journey with a whole lot of trust. We were islands, we'll take care of ourselves. Thank you very much. And all of a sudden, it was a whole different soup. Now we're dependent. And we all had to make decisions on how we were going to accept that. And some of us had harder times than the others. We have to work together. I mean, we have to. We can't get in that canoe and be bickering with the person three seats behind us. Otherwise, it's going to come out. We have to really check egos and just let it go. If you don't have anything good to say, then don't bring it out. Just have good feelings and have fun on the canoe and you'll fly. This is a positive thing, and trying to be positive the whole entire time. It's a great day, and you guys are a great crew, and I know you can do this. I have all the confidence in the world in you. There's no doubts in my mind, none. So be strong, be happy, and enjoy this experience you're about to undertake. Les Nelson, he's an awesome skipper. He does make everybody feel like they're one. Where's my crew? Let me get my crew right here. You want some? That day on Eagle Spear, Eric Pacheco was our skipper. He was a little bit nervous, I think, because he was out on the new canoe, which is the biggest one. I wasn't sure if I should go out there or not, and they just all kind of encouraged me, and, you know, come on, Eric, you can do it.
We had expected to be on the water for around uh, four hours and we had a brand new beautiful strip canoe and it's extremely fast and I, we were passing canoes left and right. People were pretty excited, the adrenaline was pumping for the very first day to be on the water. When they say to do a 20 count or a 10 count, you pull with everything you have, everything, until the count is done. I pretty much try to turn into a, a machine that doesn't do anything other than pull and follow orders. I pulled out one of the songs. One of the songs wanted to be sung. It was the power song, Pialet Power Song, gifted to us by David Duenas, my cousin, Pialet Tribe. I'd never used it on a canoe, and I don't know why. I'd seen everybody pulling. That song popped in my head. Pretty soon, everyone else started singing. Yeah, I just had the, the warmest feeling inside. And he sings to them. That takes away the pain in their body, the hurt that they have. Takes away the bad things. Some elders say, you know, you can be out here so long, you can hear some songs come to you on these waters. I would find myself paddling and pulling, and I would be humming, and I'd be singing something, but I'd never heard it before. And the canoe family behind me would say, sing it a little bit louder, Val, so we can hear you. And I was embarrassed because I didn't know the song. It was just coming to me. I don't know if there's anybody from Okushu that would know any canoe song. I wouldn't know who to ask. As a people, we're, we're very poor with songs. We have so much money, but we, we can't just buy songs. Before we knew it, the other Muckleshoot canoe was still way up there. So we just kept pulling really hard. We was out in front for the longest time, and after a while, I seen the support boat come up. I said, no, you need to go back. I told that support boat, turn around. Go get that other skipper and that other canoe. You can't leave a brand new skipper and a brand new canoe alone. Go back and try to find Harry. Yeah. Started praying that canoe come to me. I turned around and I seen that canoe behind us. They're there. Yo, Michael Jones! Yeah! How is their friends and relatives? We caught up with them and they were taking a break behind the big support boat, eating some lunch. Now we're together again. It's a good thing. Balance will. Anybody? Uh -huh. Anybody? Uh -huh. Oh, oh you guys heard Baker. Oh, how oh, oh, ready? Oh, oh. Boat. Hey, I didn't say boat. When you step in the canoe, you gotta hop off, homie. No. <laughs> well, that, I was talking about right this there. boat. Yeah. He's a balance boat. Hop off the boat. Everybody heard it. Hey, yeah. It's Monday. Alex Baker came out to Macaw. And he just felt that need to be out there and be on the water and to be a puller and help support us in any way he could. 
Are you ready? Yep. Oh! <laughs> really happy that he's here with you. I told him I didn't want to go on this journey without him. I'm just happy he's here this year, pulling with us. An honor to have my dad with me. Man, you guys, he's not alone either. Hurry up! Hurry up! You should My dad and my cousins, my grandmas, and my elders. It's a lot of fun having elders out here on the water with us. They like to see us young people just out there having fun, pulling. Paddles in! Go! And they thought, oh, we're going to leave these guys again. They're going to dust us. It was kind of like a race on whose crew could go faster. That canoe really hauled to Clallam Bay. We really had a good crew that day. We were very well focused and really worked well together. And Eric just did a really great job. There's a Coast Guard station right there, old Coast Guard station. That's where the camping will be. We've got a good captain back here, so but we'll be coming up to it soon here. Not very far. Before we knew it, it was like Les Senior had looked down at us and he said, you know what, you guys, you guys are almost there. It's just right there. I seen Eagle Spirits coming in. She was drifting down so swiftly. And the power with them children were so great. I could feel the strength in that canoe. We pulled in at 10.30 and they didn't think we were gonna be there till noon. Cake. Now we need to get John and who else? Jesse in there. Yeah, I'll do. I'll really do really like really Baker did Jesse. today. I'll jump right in. <laughs> in the camera. All right, Eric, talk to us. Eric, get the skip. Having fun out there. It was a good time. This guy had fun. Give me the camera, man. <laughs> There are many negative perceptions in the mainstream about Native communities. Why are they having this problem with drugs and alcohol? Why are they having problem making it in the mainstream educational system? My feeling is that the mainstream just doesn't get it. It has to be done on the terms of who American Indian people are. We really are living in two worlds and we're really trying to grasp and hold on to both of those worlds. A lot of times when we say culture, we think of regalia, but often for our young people, when they're self-conscious and dealing with their own identity issues just as a teenager or a young person, those things just feel sometimes like an enormous hurdle to get over. And uh, the canoe, I think, provides an excellent opportunity for somebody that maybe enjoys the physical challenge and then will receive that connection spiritually once they're out there. Perhaps the reason that they're not hearing the message of participating in the journey is because they're still working on getting the confidence within themselves to feel like they would belong. We call it the, the Indian crab syndrome, where the Indian crabs keep crawling out of the, the bucket, and then the ones in the bottom of the bucket keep pulling them back in the bucket so they can't get out to freedom. And that mindset sometimes when somebody's trying to walk the red road, the community looks at them and says, 
Oh, you know, I knew what you were like before. You're not any better. It makes it hard. So what's up for tomorrow? Where are we going? Lower Elwha. Going Lower Elwha and through the mouth of the river because they don't want us on Hollywood Beach anymore because after, after last, last year, year they desecrated the canoes. A whole bunch of canoes got beer spilled on them and pissed on. You never see any of us go do that to their churches or I know, Jehovah Witnesses' houses or anything. What if we went and did that to their place? Catholic like, think how they Just think how they'd feel. We don't do that to go them. Take a keg and we have respect for what they have. It. Story. You know what we do tomorrow, <laughs> eh? We all drive our canoes backwards. Pennies, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. two and bacons, and two sauces. And a cup of juice on? Jeez, I remember those the good old days. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's a good day to play basketball. Sometimes it's a good day to eat good breakfast. Gone. Hey, Victor, your dad's lived everywhere but home, honey. <laughs> <laughs> your dad ain't never coming back. When Indians leave, they never return. Last the Mohicans, last the Winnebago. Shut up, Thomas, before I beat you up again. <laughs>like it was going to be a smooth pull. We knew it was going to be a really long pull. We were told it was about 41 miles. Pace yourself. It's not a race. We don't need to race. Just get through today because you got a lot, a lot more time to go yet. Your forearms hurt? Uh -uh. My upper arms. Now as I understand it, Reggie wanted to work together with us too. So let's not be leaving them behind. You guys try to stay together with them. The surf was really pounding the shores at Clallam Bay. huge going over the bow because they don't ever go over the bow it seems like Take off. We lost one of our pullers. Val sacrificed herself to, you know, get Eagle Spirit out on the water. Ray literally just picked me up, dragged me on board, and took me out to the canoe, and then I got in. Yep. Yeah. Okay, push off.
there on the water for a while, that's when you really get a feel for your crew, when you really get a feel for your canoe, because that's when that canoe gets to know you. Roy Marino is an awesome lead puller. <laughs> he just digs in and gives it his all and doesn't quit. Well, we got going and I started pushing. And what we found is as we pulled along, we just were entering into a huge fog bank, socked in on both sides. Like the starter's getting stuck. Hopefully it's not the motor. I don't think anybody's checked the oil in it. I remember the water was flat that day. It was so flat and all you could see was the rollers going through. And you could see the kelp, so we kind of knew we were like close to shore, but the fog was so thick that day. Some of our crew began to get exhausted. One of our paddlers is getting sick. Is all right, get off. Couldn't tell by any landmarks where you were. At some point, it even felt like we were paddling in circles. You couldn't see, you know, 20 feet in front of you. Going through that for hours and hours and hours, you kind of start feeling like you're not getting anywhere. Go out! We're in three feet of water! A little nervous at points because you wonder, because you just keep on pulling and you're not really sure where you are or exactly where you're going and you can tell that some people are getting nervous with the whole situation. Trying to get extra help for each canoe. get in this frame of mind where you're just like, where am I going? Are we going the right way? Why is the weather not clear enough? Here's where we are right here. We ain't even halfway to know. I was paddling and I was falling asleep. I could feel the canoe getting tired. I could feel pullers getting tired. No landmark to show how far you've gone. Nothing around you to show how fast you're going. I just couldn't stay in the frame of mind of I can do this. All right, it's enough. It's time to get towed. We need three. These three pullers can't go on anymore. They need pullers. Three of them. Hurry up. Take it. Just take it. Go. Hurry up. Nobody's getting on. We're all gonna have to get off. My mom was skipper in that day, so I would have felt bad leaving my mom out there because I know she wouldn't have left me out there, so I wanted to stay out there with her too. Jim, do you want to pull? Come on. I finally got off of Eagle Spirit and onto the support boat, and at which time I realized I had been out there for eight hours. So, uh, how are the you guys down and with a hypothermia, are they okay? I came out here to finish this journey, to, to really work at it, and I felt like I kind of let myself down that day because I didn't continue. They have to learn to keep their clothes on, to stay warm, instead of taking it off, and then put it back on, that's how they get sick, that's how they get a hypothermia. When we finally reached just outside Lower Elwa, the fog, of course, was starting to go away. I, I know we're going to miss that half hour window to get in the river. We weren't quite sure where the mouth of the river was. Connie kept saying, that's not it. That's not it. He kept hollering, pull, pull. Elwa straight ahead. You can see it now. 
By the time we saw it, it was too late. We couldn't paddle out past the surf to get into the mouth of the river. Tell them, Les, tell them. Tell them what to do. Yeah, too late. We're done. We're done. Yeah, they're already on the beach. Yeah. We were so exhausted at that point. We'd been pulling for 10 hours. I told the skipper that I wanted the skipper, that I needed to sit in that back seat. We pushed off, and we were heading opposite way from the river. started paddling and the same thing happened again. Oh no, this looks crazy to me. I should have just waited until it died down. Here's that, I have that support boat right there pulling. Yeah, that's what I thought. The support boat and Housen went over there again and towed them off, pulled them straight out. I got him offshore again with the eagle come up and hovered over the canoe, flapping its wings right above the canoe. And I asked that eagle get us in the mouth of that river. So they turned it and headed in there into the mouth of the Elwha with the help of the eagle. We didn't have the strength to turn her around to bring her in, stern first. And so the Lower Elwha people and the people on shore came rushing down to the bank of the river and they helped us get out and they packed our canoe up onto the shore. So it keeps me going. I just always thinking my grandma's always just gonna be there. No one shall be on shore when I get there. I've done a lot of things, a lot of sports, a lot of glory, but coming into Elwha at the end of that pole was the greatest feeling I've ever had. A lot of people really put their heart into what we were doing. They came back through that rope out, grabbed it and just clicked right on the, that was meant to be. That was meant to be right there. And they, I was everybody in, sit down, everybody. And something grabbed me up, through protocol. Do it anyways. Do it anyways. And I was, all right. I swear to God, it grabbed me right here by my neck. Boom! Stood me up. I was, they asked permission to come ashore, tired and wet and hungry. Just had a long day. Canoes came from Mother Earth a tall tree. They had to be respected. The seal spirit, I was towing it. The canoe came up and banged the side of the support boat and cracked its heart. During the journey, the family was getting sick inside the canoe. And they would come in on shore, feed themselves and they wouldn't feed the canoe with the traditional food like they're supposed to. And the canoe lost its spirit. It gave up. Right now, I've got a broken heart like the heart is broken on my canoe. This canoe will keep dumping our children out until they become as one. 
we're looking forward to this journey and we always have our challenges but we always have a lot of respect for the, the people uh, and all the ex experiences that we have on the journey. At protocol, we had honored the people who had helped us out when we needed them the most, helped us get off that beach. They had given us the tow which we needed to get in the mouth of that river. We wrapped them in a penalty, and what the native people say is wrap them in love. It's important that we gift these people because we're going to honor our canoe so she knows that we're doing the right thing. The protocol is the most sacred thing because it's spiritual. My favorite part is going to the protocol and it's fun because all the tribes, they do something different. Fun to watch everything because I'm new to this and so I'm watching and learning. When you do protocol, you always get up and thank the hereditary chiefs of the land and all the, all the people there for being there. It comes from the bottom of your heart. Songs and dances that's cleansing them, the soul and bringing the people together as one. I think coming together every night and practicing our songs would, would be a positive thing. And what are we going to do during protocol and getting those type of things down? But a lot of our people up and leave right away. Just as soon as they put their canoes away, they're up, they're gone over the hill. That's why I tell Muckle Shoot, stay with your group. It's important that these elders see you out there. And I love Muckle Shoot. I want to teach them, but I can't because they're all wandering off here and there. Some listen and some don't. These children out there, this is where I look for the hope. Grab them right now. Teach them. The ones I admire um, the most are like Tulalips because they dance so beautifully. I want to learn some of their dances as well as learning some dances from our tribe. I would just like to tell a little bit of history of this song. I have studied with my grandmother. She told me the history of when she was a little child in the hop fields near Muckleshoot. The song spoke of the fields, of the hop fields in Muckleshoot. She said that this song comes from these people's territory. She's always said that to me. And again, I want to encourage the Muckleshoot tribe to learn this song so that they may sing it themselves. My mother, her wishes, before she died, she grabbed my son and told him, the song, take it back to Muckleshoot and give it back to them. The song was Siak song. Grandma Norma, she's been really nice. She's been teaching me songs. I don't think we had any songs last year. None. Until Norma. I'm going to be out there. The whole nation of Muckleshoot, open your eyes to reality. I know you love your children out there, but acknowledge who they really are.
the next morning, and everybody was saying, hey, we're going to go through the mouth of the lower Elwha. And I remember we had Reggie from Quinault skipping us that day. We're getting ready to go to Port Angeles, to Hollywood Beach there. The uh, weather forecast picked up some small craft advisories and six to eight foot swells. And every canoe that was going out flipped in the mouth of that river. A couple of the pullers were having second thoughts about it. Lena was next to me and she was like, Rachel, I got the butterflies. I don't know if I can do this. If anybody wanted to jump out, they had an opportunity, but everybody elected to get back in. Leaving through the mouth of Elwha was some serious business. We started heading into the water, and two canoes flipped while we were in the water. We hit a little bit of a curl and breaker, which crashed into the bow. And everybody in the back was joking. They're like, hey, if you guys hit a wave, lock legs until you guys go out together. Picked us up in the air pretty good, and I can hear the girls up there, woohoo. We're either the bravest Indians, or we're really just idiots. I uh, timed it out, and a couple big ones would go by. And then all of a sudden, he said, let's go. Now, 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 everybody go. The second we came through, I just started bawling. And that was just uh, another experience, a lesson to teach them. Don't go through the big ones. <laughs> we were cutting across, trying to get into Hollywood Beach, and by that time, the gale winds picked up on us, and we couldn't turn. Instead of trying to cut over here and, and really put us in a, in a threatening position, we headed for the beach on the other side. And then we got the idea of, uh, hey, we'll reenact Lewis and Clark, and we'll just pick the canoe up. They're walking. They're packing it, and they threw it on our shoulders. They are? Yeah. Oh, hey, uh -huh. we walk our canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, today was an awesome day. When we first started getting into some of those waves and those swells when we were coming out, I didn't feel no fear of nobody. This is new to me. I've never packed a canoe to a beach. And all my years of journey, and I thought I really experienced everything. <laughs> I did. I did. But uh Michael Sheet, you impressed me. I raised my hands to you. <laughs> We are happy that you come and help us bless what had occurred last year with this site. You are welcome. Please come ashore and enjoy our potlatch and our home. <laughs> Our canoes couldn't be safe here. Yeah, they're going to have to scare me okay. all night. We're, we're going to show you guys up. Last year we had some experiences that really made people feel unsafe about coming here. Last year during the night, some people came in and did some vandalism to the canoes. Um, they had beer poured on them. A couple were urinated on. Some of them were tipped over. And this year, Lower Elwha felt that it was very important to right that wrong. Fox Nask Man, eat and love, eat a son to spree. Oh, Nancy Star, Fox Nask Man, eat and love, eat a son to spree.
it was very powerful and very cleansing for the community and, and for Port Angeles. Ray, uh, Ray just called me from the camp and uh, he said that they're not going to pull to uh, Jamestown, that they're going to trailer the, the canoes down there. Ray, Why uh, don't you take this one out and pull it out Ray there? Didn't, he didn't go into any details. And, um, they're, they should be here pretty shortly because they were driving when he called me. So An elder came in our circle that morning in Lower L1 and said, the Straits of Juan de Fuca are not cooperating with tribal journeys and it's too dangerous. They could have came down here and made that decision here on this beach instead of back there. I was thinking the four of us should grab paddles and we should just paddle it down there yeah. and show them. Darn right, so we could show them we could do it. Yeah. We have that faith, we have that guts to do it. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I know you do, Norm. <laughs> I know you do. We could be up in the front, I'll skip her and these guys. There you go. Sure. Darn right, we can make it. You can't take somebody else's word that it's going to be a gale warning. You got to go look at the water itself. Water looks calm, water looks good, but the weather forecast is telling us gale force winds. As you can see, today would have been a good day to be on the water. Our support crew was a little upset because nobody wanted to go out. It's a decision that was made by the captain, and you know, we have to go what the captain says. We're relatives from Port Gamble. We have come to enjoy the festivities on our way to Tulela for the rest of the canoes. We all just kind of sat there going, ah, oh, we should have been out there on the water. It was a letdown. When we ended in Jamestown by land and set up camp, we were separated when one canoe went home to Seattle to host. So we're at Don Armini Boat Launch at Alki Beach in West Seattle. And so we'll be taking off today here and we'll be going out to meet the uh, South Puget Sound tribes, uh, probably off Alki Point. From there, we'll, we'll greet them and then escort them to Golden Gardens where they will do a formal protocol to ask permission to land. And then we'll be taking them to Daybreak Star for, a, uh, for dinner and protocol and giveaway tonight. When we come to our territory, it's up to us to guide these people across our waters. These babies, these young babies, bring them back home. Lake Lao, come see the stuff. Buckleshoot Obschid. My name is Birdie Star. I'm Muckleshoot. I joined the journey today. This means a lot to me because I am the language teacher for the Muckleshoot Child Care Center. It makes me feel really happy that I have the opportunity to take part in the ceremonies here. When we return to some of our original practices, it really gives us a sense of how our ancestors lived on a daily basis. I'm doing this for my small ones. They're already planning on pulling canoe. They've already got songs. They know more songs than me. for the southern tribes to come up so that we can meet them and bring them into Golden Gardens where we're gonna have protocols. Two canoes from the, from the south coming this way. Oh. started to get rushing because you could see there was a large, large group of people on shore. I knew my daughter was going to be there and my mom was going to be there. As an American Indian person, 
I was really swelling with pride to see all of the community members come out to watch their canoe lead all of the other South Puget Sound canoes in. There was quite a few of my, uh, my former students were there. I had my mom there to, to see me come in to say, hey, you know, you're doing this, and to be able to do this for our people. Once we finally got all the canoes rafted up on the water, we escorted them in. We all paddled in, and I remember I started crying. They did a formal protocol to ask to come ashore. I think the most important thing for uh, a leader to keep in mind while he's uh, doing protocol and inviting people ashore, you gotta keep a strong, clear mind, an open mind, you know, and really care about the, the uh, tribal people. Squawkson Island, John Daniels Jr. teaches us to tell the old kid, buckle shoot obstead, buckle shoot obstead, buckle shoot obstead, John Daniels Jr. I know you've traveled far. I know you're tired. I know you're hungry. It's an honor to have you visiting here, the Muckleshoot tribe. We welcome you. Please come ashore and share stories. We'll share food, song, and dance. Welcome ashore. <laughs> When grandmother was pulled out to go to Seattle, I guess when we talked about it before in meetings and discussed what we were going to do as far as us hosting and everything, we it was like, oh, no big deal. We'll just get a few people and, and you know, we'll go do the hosting and then we'll meet up with everybody. We had uh, almost half of our crew in Seattle hosting the South Sound tribes. Uh, in order to have both our canoes on the water, we had to seek assistance from uh, Tulelo to uh, fill up both of our canoes. Once we were all kind of going our own ways, we kind of sat back and said, hey, I miss so-and-so making me laugh. I miss, you know, so-and-so's cooking, or I miss so-and-so's jokes. We really missed each other. It was like part of us was ripped out. It was, it was so sad. I mean, I was happy because they were going to represent us at home, but I missed them so much. And I think for us, I think that was the turning point of where we're like, okay, we're more than just a group of people. We are the Muckleshoot people! We've traveled many miles. We're wet and tired and hungry. We wish to come ashore and join in your celebrations. <laughs> we ask permission to come ashore. You have been traveling, uh, most of you, through uh, Clallam country for quite a while now. Muckleshoot, we welcome you here today. And would you please uh, go ahead and come ashore? Oh, Sam! I think he was about eight or nine years old, and then he heard that the Piaup had a canoe that they were going to have polars on it, and he jumped on that canoe. He loves the water. He respects the water, and I always told him to respect that water, because the water can take you any time. It's like a hand grab you, and you're gone. The way I was taught is that canoe comes first, your crew comes second, and you're always last. All right, down. It was nice when it swing. It was like the wind pushed us down and around and it was back right in. Whoops. I'm getting the ones that are already open. I'm getting ones that are already open. Oh, look at this little one. Can't open it. Get up. Come on, you guys, get up. I don't know how anybody can sleep with all this ruckus going on. Hey, getting up. Renee. 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 Renee.
Wake up! Do that though, just give it to When I first became interested in in the canoe family, one of the things that I wanted to bring to it was the language. When we got to Port Gamble, um, I knew that we were coming to the end of the journey and I still hadn't had the opportunity to be able to do the protocol. I would like to ask permission to do protocol at Suquamish. Uh, let her say it in our language. I'd approve of it. It had previously been done by one of our other skippers. Val, you should have been doing it all along because you do practice our language. It's something that you should be doing. One of the elders was the first to speak and she said, yes, I think that you should have been doing it all along and I think you should do it in Tulalip too. I think uh, I had to respect to their decision as far as what so. they wanted. Okay. There was no one in the circle that didn't support it, that spoke out. I know Les was getting frustrated with the family because they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. The only one that's supposed to talk is the skipper. We have uh, two more days ahead of us. Work together as a team. Let's leave any of your problems here, right here on this, this lawn or at the shore. Don't bring it with you. Junior walked off. His boy walked away. Huh? His boy took off. Just too much for him, so he just left. They still have a lot to learn. I've only been used to pulling with Les, and he's my skipper. If somebody feels like their heart's not there and they can't do it, then don't stick it out. It's not, it's not worth all of that. Yeah, I was pretty mad that Les decided to leave. I guess in my eyes, everybody has their own reasons on why they're there and why they leave. After our day of hosting at uh, Golden Gardens Daybreak Star, we uh, launched from Golden Gardens to head to Suquamish. And I think we were excited because we were we were going to where we were going to meet up with the rest of our family. Also, if you have some open seats next to you at the table, there are some of our uh, elders that are still looking for some spots. I did protocol when we reached Suquamish. When we finally landed and had permission to speak, I asked for permission to come ashore in the language. Port Gamble. To all you who are my relatives and my friends, we are the Muckleshoot Canoe family. We're tired, we're hungry. We need a place to rest and we'd like permission to come on to your shores. Welcome our friends and relatives from Muckleshoot. We're honored that you could come here to Suquamish and be with us today. Welcome to Suquamish. When we came back together in Suquamish, it was like we were united again. This is my family. We're together, it felt right again. For those of you who didn't get to go to the hosting at Daybreak Star, it was good to go home and, and see our people on shore, you know, there waiting for us. And we sat in the water from about one in the afternoon till about, what, seven o'clock at night, it seemed yeah. like, <laughs> waiting for all the canoes to come in. But once we got to finally go into shore and all our families were there, it was good just to see everybody. I was yelling at this guy here, watch the stroke, quit looking around at the crowd, watch the stroke, because it's going like this. <laughs> I missed everybody, I wanted to come back so bad, so. It was fun though. I just want to tell everybody I'm really proud of them and keep your heads up, we could do it tomorrow. I started to see things in people and healing beginning to happen because they felt connected to a family. There was somebody there, a mom and a dad, and all these aunties and all these uncles, and all of a sudden you saw these people start to come out of their shell and, and they just start pouring out their hearts. You could be proud and thankful for who we are as, mm -hmm. as Atsith Tabu. 
And when you're in it for the spirit, it all shows. It keeps you aswalach, keeps you strong. You remember that aswalach, aswalach, just we are strong. Atil tabiu, we're strong people. When you're out in the water, it just clears your mind. Glad that both of my grandmothers are here. My Auntie Donna. There's something that's coming alive here, and it's the canoe. And it's a part of each one of us. That's our culture and our tradition. Everybody started to understand that their place in the family was solid. The family wasn't going to bust apart, and they were going to be left high and dry wondering, why did I come on this journey? They started to feel like the family. Seal Spirit had to get patched up last night. It was bringing in some water on the patch in the front, and we're going to have to trailer it up to Everett. So Grandmother and Eagle Spirit's going to be out there in the waters today the whole way. We didn't put Seal Spirit in the water. That was what we wanted to do, but it didn't happen. But you know what? It was OK. It was a spirit of cooperativeness that hadn't been part of the family since India Bay. And we're still a short one skipper. We were like, hey, we should put Will in there. Will did good the day before. That morning, they said, yes, you're going to skipper the grandmother over. Before we even start, every one of us should jump in, cleanse our bodies. When we circled up in Suquamish around those canoes, and we talked. Everybody was on board. We're all pulling together. There's going to be all kinds of people watching us, thousands of people watching us. I don't want anything to happen that would disrespect the tribe, the canoe family, or to anyone else. We need to have that union. This is going to be a big day. journey with any one reason but as I began to pull I began to realize I'm pulling for my sister because last year was her last event and I need to do something for her because I couldn't save her life for me it's a healing from that guilt of not saving her my hands are lifted to her Some look at me and go, you know, is she sick? But if they ask, I tell them right up front, my sister-in-law is going through a really hard struggle right now. My sister-in-law had really long hair and she cut it and then was worried about being bald. And I just told her, you know, as women, a lot of people look at it as part of our identity as to who we are, but it's really not, it's just hair. I told her, I said, if you shave my head, I'll keep it bald. She did, she shaved my head. And I'm out here to just let her know that us as Native American women are strong women and she can make it through anything. My daughter Renee Mayo also shaved her head. Some of the other little Native kids have looked at her and go, how come that little girl's got no hair? And she tells them straight up right away, my auntie has cancer and I shaved my head for her. I felt here I was going to learn something. And when I say learn something, I don't mean I'm going to learn how to paddle or I'm going to learn about the ocean or I'm going to learn about being on the water. I guess it was more about finding myself and understanding why do we go on these journeys. I opened this door for my kids and they got to see, you know, the hard work and 
the tears and the pains and you know and my little boy he's already saying I'm gonna pull a canoe I'm gonna pull a canoe everyone knows me as my dad's son well I'm the son of John Halliday oh okay you're John's kid the thing with the canoe journey is my dad's not involved hopefully people will stop referring to me as John's son and as me Dennis Halliday I've been in a position where I've had to defend the canoe journey. Coming from my own family, they said I was out being Indian. You're being Indian out there pulling canoes around in the water. I'm like, man, you guys do not even know what you're talking about. I don't know what's there to be embarrassed about. I mean, you can't just say, no, I'm not Indian. I'm not Muckleshoot. How are you not going to be Muckleshoot when, you know, like your mom and your dad are both Indian, so how are you going to not be Indian? The crew was starting to get more excited. The uh, Tulalip support boats were coming out and telling us where everybody was and so forth. And we rounded the corner over by Hat Island. It's supposed to go single file, and I, I kept having to take the canoe real wide because they were so amped up. They were they were pulling too hard, <laughs> and so getting them actually to go slow was my biggest challenge in, <laughs> in coming in that day. Are you enjoying this here today? canoe from Muckleshoot. This is one that uh, is new for them this year. Thank you, Muckleshoot, again, for bringing all of your support here to Tulalip Tribal Journey 2003. They own and uh, paddle three new canoes now. I was inspired by every arrival. This journey means a lot to my people. It means a lot to me. I'm doing this for my people. To have all those people on those shores recognizing what these canoe families have gone through in the last several weeks, what they've done and the sacrifices and the hard work, to have them there cheering you on and singing and welcoming you was just the biggest rush of my life. And as they lined the canoes up, this young man came towards our canoe to grab it, and I looked up, and it was my son. He looked right at me, and he goes, Mom, I'm so proud of you. Our community needs to realize how rich we still are. Not everything is gone. It still is there. Just reach out and grab it. Are you going to be in Tulalip? They say I'm going to be in Tulalip with you because my mind is always out there in that water with them. You make me strong. For the sake of these children, I will come back to help them out once again. All of a sudden, I started to realize I have a big job. What am I going to say? How am I going to sum this up? People are tired and they're cold and they want to go in to shore. I have to be able to say something in very few words that wraps up this journey. Twa Gwalapu, Gwalapu Tidishan, Buckle Shoots, Kalait, Siaya. Yahwala Sali, Grandmother. As walk will chalab, as sawas chalab, as gloh will chalab. O tala will ti altadisha, 
Suquamish. Do flush up state stuff. Buckle shoe stops, Chad. We've had a long and hard and very try, trying journey. We started out as individuals and we've ended up as family. Truly healing through unity has been manifested to this family as we have gone through many, many trials and hard times. We're very tired, we're cold, we're hungry. We've been in the water a long time. We're grateful that our journey has ended here on these beautiful shores of Tulalip. And we humbly ask you if we could have permission to please come ashore to join in your festivities, in your songs and your dances, your food, your relatives. And we want to honor our ancestors who we know are waiting for us here on these shores. Hoyato. Hoseam, thank you for that. I'd like to thank all my brothers, my sisters, my relatives from the Muckleshoot tribe for taking this long journey. Those are good words that you spoke. You left not united, but you come back home very united, a family. And that's another thing that these journeys are all about. That's what the teachings are on the water. I'm so proud of your accomplishments. So please bring my relatives, my friends ashore, because I know one day, maybe one day soon, Muckleshoot will be the proud host and we'll be able to go visit your people at, on your waters. Thank you for coming to Tlaleb. We honor you, so please honor us by coming ashore. Oh, see you. Thank you. like we thought it would. It ended at a totally different level of acceptance. New leaders were born on this journey for Muckleshoot. And I lift my hands to them.
Yeah.